down. Today we're going to modify a Sega Master System 2 and the first, I'm actually going to do a few tutorials on this but um, the first one we're going to do is probably one of the easier ones and that's adding a 50 and 60 hertz switch. So uh, for guys in the power region this is a really good idea because um, basically you're being robbed, your games are running what is it, 70, 20 percent slower than what they should be. So um, all we're going to do is add a real simple switch and that will fix it up. So smaller borders, the games run at full speed and it's quite funny with the master systems because if you're playing a game like uh, Alex the Kid which is built into most of these um, you'll notice that you can actually not only see the borders decrease but you can actually hear the change in pitch and music because you can uh, with a switch you can just flick it on the fly but in order to do that uh, we need to use the switches that we always use so single pole double throw switches um, and they also need to be make before break so they break contact before they make contact so you don't short anything out. Um, other than the switch we just need a little bit of wire so uh, three wires in fact we've got to have a 5 volt, a ground and then our signal wire and that's it no resistors, no capacitors, nothing else so you don't need a lot of hardware to do this and it does work with the RF mods but later on um, we'll actually uh, I'll show you how to do S video as well as composite and uh, dual mono because these didn't have stereo. Right so I'll get these out of the way and then we'll crack into it. Okay so with your master system uh, what we need to do is I've already taken the screws out of this one but um, there's a screw here, 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 here and then here and they're all Phillips screws so get those out and then you can lift the lid off it and you'll find some more screws in here and then we need to take the, the motherboard out for this so what we need to do is there's a screw in the back corner uh, there's one here, here, another one here, one more here and last one there so you need to take those out and then you've got these little tin clips on the side you need to, there's one there and two at the rear in the back there uh, Hopefully you can see that okay. You need to sort of bend them back a little bit so they're out of the way. And then we can get our shielding off. And then the last two you need to do, don't worry, you need to take one screw out um, for the voltage regulator but leave the other one in. So I'll just bring you a little bit closer. So leave that one there, the one that's closest to it. Leave him in, he's not a problem. So once you've taken all those screws out, the last two we need to get out are these two here. Um, which are on either side of the cartridge port. So lift them out and once you've done that you'll find it's because there's plastic legs on here that your um, master system's just a little bit awkward to get his motherboard out but um, yeah it just pops out and then we can work on it. Right so we need to find um, this IC and it has marked on it uh, 315 5246 okay that's the IC we're going to be looking at and um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be lifting a leg um, out of the motherboard for this one and that's the hardest part, the rest is really easy. Now you've got to get, as I was saying earlier, a positive and a negative into it. So you're going to get a couple of choices really as to what you want to do. Um, you can take them straight out of your voltage regulator for your 5 volts and then find you know, one of the grounds on the surrounding, uh, surrounding area on the motherboard. Um, or um, what I see a lot on uh, some of the popular modding websites is there's actually a couple of local areas where we can get our voltage. So we'll, um, we'll come to that in a second. So what I'll do is I'll just get you zoomed in and then uh, we'll start looking at getting this lead lifted. Okay, so here we are just having a closer look at this uh, IC. So again, it's the, um, it's the Sega chip. It's um, marked 315-5246 and it actually stands out because it's got this zigzag sort of leg arrangement and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be lifting out um, the 57th leg so pin 57 is what we're going to be lifting out of the motherboard and you can see I've just put a little dob of solder but I'll just point into it it's this one here okay and like a lot of these boards the pins are actually marked so it's nice and easy to actually find it all you've got to do is you'll notice that this very last leg here has got um, actually slightly wrong angle uh, there we are it's got 64 written on there so that's pin 64 so all you've got to do 
is count backwards until you get to pin 57. But before we go wrenching this out of the board, what I'm going to do is flip it over and do my usual trick of adding some solder and then using some solder braid just to remove as much excess solder as I can so it comes out of the board that bit easier. Okay, so we're just looking at the um, bottom of our motherboard here and again all you do is find pin 64 which is um, on the very end and then just count backwards until you get to pin 57 which is right here. So what I'm going to do is just add a bit of solder to it first just to heat it up a bit and if you remember I've said in most of my other videos that old solder um, has a much higher melting temperature than new solder so we add a bit of new solder just so it uh, melts a bit easier and what I'm going to do now is just use a bit of my solder braid just to absorb um, any extra solder that I can and you don't want to keep the heat on this too long um, you need to do it in a couple of quick successions Excellent. Now it doesn't matter if you don't get all of the solder out, but the more you can get out the better. Because um, it's just going to make lifting this leg out just that bit easier. So we'll flip the board back over and we'll get it lifted out. Alright, so now looking at our board you can see that uh, most of the solder is removed. And um, what I'm going to do is just apply a little bit of heat to the area. And then just start lifting this leg out just very gently. And just take your time doing this and don't be surprised if you've got to have a couple of goes at it. Okay, so that's our lead lifted out. And um, all I'll do now is just add a little bit of solder to it and probably give it a quick trim up. And um, then we'll be ready to add our wires. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I've just got some uh, some pliers here, so I'm just going to very carefully straighten the leg out. Don't put much pressure on it because you just want to make it so it's just going to sort of sit there, and we're going to get our wire attached to it. And um, what we'll do is, um, like we do with a lot of these, is we're actually going to come back and add some hot glue under it and over it and sort of pack it to give it a bit of support once we've um, added our wires. So I'm just going to dob some solder on here. And now all we need to do is attach our wires and uh, we're on the home stretch. Okay, so now we've got our leg prepared. We just need to get our, um, our five volt feed and our ground feed ready. And you can grab the, um, the five volts and the ground straight from the, uh, we can grab the five volts from a regulator and there's plenty of places for a ground, but I see um, a lot of the popular sites for doing these mods. Um, actually point out some areas that are very close um, by and to be honest for your cable management they're um, probably a really good idea so um, we've got this little area in here um, which I've just scratched away a bit of the solder resist and um, that there is where we're going to get our 5 volts from and for a ground um, there's a leg of this capacitor which is um, very close by you can see there's a positive marking here um, so just the other side, and if I just flip that around, uh, we've got our negative stripe pointing straight down to it, so we'll use that for our ground. So we'll just add a little bit of um, solder to it, so it's going to be nice and easy to solder to. And now I've scratched away some of the solder resist, um, just down on this little point here, just add a little bit of solder to it, and that way we can use that for our 5 volts. Okay, so time to attach some wires. So what I've done is I've gone and got three wires prepared. Um, I'm going to use my white wire as uh, my signal wire, so it's going to get attached to pin 57. Um, we've got red for our um, 5 volt feed and black for our ground. So what we'll do is we'll quickly get them attached. So Okay, so first up we'll attach our ground wire. So, a little bit of heat on there, there we go, and while we're here, we'll get our 5 volt feed attached, Okay, 
Okay, and we'll just attach our white wire to pin 57. Nice and easy. And just be very careful that once you've done this, that the um, you get some hot glue onto it pretty quickly, just so that it doesn't um, put any strain on the leg. Okay, so we're just gonna put some hot glue just underneath this leg first, so it's got something to rest on. And you can just work it over the top of it as well, so it becomes encased. And um, while we're doing it, we might as well just go and add some hot glue to our other wires. Just for a bit of added strength. And we'll just let that dry and then we can attach it to our switch and uh, then that's actually it, we're finished. Okay, so uh, now that our um, glue's dried, it's safe to move the motherboard around and um, I haven't actually attached the switch yet as you can see because I've still got to go and do the rest of the mods to the machine, um, which we'll see in upcoming videos. But um, So what I'll do though is if this is as far as you're going, I'll show you how you need to hook your switch up. So. This is one of our single puddle double throw switches, so if you're googling for it, uh, SPDT, single pole double throw, and make sure it's uh, break before make. And all we're going to do is we're going to put our uh, white wire, which is our signal wire from pin 50, 57, that's going to get attached to the centre leg. Just like that. And then uh, it doesn't matter really which way you do it, um, but we just need to attach the ground wire to one leg. So like that. And our red wire, which is our 5 volts, just to the other leg. Okay, so that's it all hooked up. Righto, so um, we're just going to give this. 50 60 hertz switch a uh, bit of a test so what I'm going to do is at the moment it's running at 50 hertz and I'll just turn the music up for a second just so you can have a listen okay now I'll just flick the switch and you can definitely hear the difference in that And um, at 60 hertz, you see how small the borders are. It's not so easy to tell up here because it's sky, but um, if I flick it back to 50 hertz, see, look how much uh, real estate we've been missing. We were cheated with PAL, it's terrible. But either way, that's that fixed. So um, finally, we can go back and play the games how they're meant to be. So enjoy, guys. Thanks for watching. and. Um, Look out for the rest of the modifications for this poor machine coming up soon.